Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. MBK Senior Communities is dedicated to being the preferred senior living provider in the markets they serve. They create warm, inviting living spaces in desirable locations. They offer a variety of services and programs to enrich the lives of residents and their families. And by getting to know their residents, their personal preferences, and their individual needs, MBK Senior Communities can better contribute to their well-being and provide care that's right for them. They are committed to enhancing independence and quality of life, serving others the way they prefer to be treated, and providing care that is delivered with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Currently serving the Western United States, but expanding. Why not contact your local community for a tour and see for yourself why most of their residents say they felt at home from their very first visit? You can get more information by visiting their website at mbkseniorliving.com or call 949-242-1400. So about 14 months ago, I got a phone call from a gal looking for a recommendation for a place to stay while she visited her father in the local memory community. This community happens to be about a mile and a quarter from my house, so I told her if she wasn't looking for a fancy accommodation, then she was more than welcome to stay at my house. And that is how I met today's guest. Pat is a dementia daughter helping to take care of her father long distance from Oregon. I apologize that this is a long conversation. I tried to split it into two, but it was just long enough to be a little long, but too short to split into two. Hmm? Go ahead and tell me about your dad. Okay. (laughs) Well, my dad's name is Jack Rogers, and he grew up in in Sacramento, and uh, he, he, uh, he went to Cal intending to major in music, but the Army got him in the middle of that. Oh. And when he came out of the army, he had been involved in electronics, which was just a a new a new field at the time. And what years in the, was he in, in the, the army? Early fifties. Oh, okay, in the early fifties. My and, dad was in the Marines from fifty nine to sixty three. Mm-hmm. So when he came back to Cal, he majored in in physics and then went into electronics engineering. So that was his his field. But he always kept music as a as a strong hobby with the piano and with the and trumpet and with arranging. How oh, fun! Yeah. Um, so as far as his jobs, uh, he worked a, um, in Marin County at first. He worked and moved. We moved to Portland. He worked for a company called Tektronics, which is huge. Which became a huge company. Yeah, so that sounds a, familiar. It was a startup at the time in the early '60s, <laughs> and then we basically came back to California in Contra Costa County, in uh, Pleasant Hill and Walnut Creek, you know, until the time uh, my two brothers and I grew up and were getting off onto our own. Um, And uh, my dad also, uh, about the time I was in getting into high school, he also became a member of the Bohemian Club in San Francisco, um, uh, which is prestigious as far as music and performance and so forth and so he became a member what they called I think a working member because he didn't uh, get in by paying a lot of money but oh. by but by producing uh, arrangements for the shows for the the singing the quartets and the Neat. stage bands and stuff like that so he so the Bohemian Club has binders full of musical arrangements and this is all jazz that jazz was basically the only music he was interested in but he was very very good at it and he did and, arranging and he did physics that's amazing yeah so so i mean that's i think that's part part of the same part of the brain the math kind of the math brain and the music brain oh. are related yeah well i used to but he used to be able to I mean, like when I, we were kids my dad mm-hmm. would be sitting there he would do the ra- musical arranging and transcribing which means he's listening to something in the headset and writing down what all the different instruments are playing oh wow so um so those he was very good at both of those things arranging and transcribing for jazz and so how old is he right now so now he's 88 okay and how long has he been diagnosed with alzheimer's or he was diagnosed in his early 70s with 
uh, cognitive impairment, they call it. And so, so we're looking at, you know, about um, 15 years worth of time here. It's progressed to his diagnosis now is Alzheimer type dementia. Hmm. I haven't heard of that actual diagnosis, you know, but so they don't say straight out Alzheimer's disease or something, but it's Alzheimer's type dementia. Yeah, interesting because there are a lot of different types, which you just learned about the other night. Right, I had a support group that yeah. I went to the first time. Yeah, yeah, I learned. I didn't know my mom was actually diagnosed with Alzheimer's, so I went through all the different types, tried to pinpoint exactly what she had, uh-huh. and then the, earlier this year I found out, oh yes, she was actually diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I'm like, okay, I could have skipped that research, <laughs> but it was interesting to learn the different types and and how the symptoms and the reactions to the Dif- different yeah, types. Yeah, different parts of the brain affected. Yeah, yeah it's mm-hmm. interesting, you know, because they always tell you, you've met one Alzheimer's patient, you've met exactly one because everybody's different and the disease affects everybody's brains differently so that's always mm-hmm. a big challenge yeah so you come and visit him twice a year that's about what i'm doing now and that's pretty common to what i did you know throughout my adult life except for the period where it was kind of getting obvious that my father and my stepmother he was remarried when i was in my 20s so my my dad and stepmom, when it was getting to the point where he obviously should not be left alone in the house, and she had other activities still that she wanted to do, uh, and she also realized independently that assisted living was in their future. At that point, I enrolled for the is it FMLA, Family Medical Leave, mm-hmm. at work, which enabled me to come down more often because I wanted to make a point of coming down every... I live in Oregon. I, I would start to come down every two to three months uh, just to give my stepmother a break. Yeah. Um, she she had kind of looked into the idea of having people come in for periods of, of time, but she really wasn't entirely comfortable with that idea. Um, but she really liked the idea of having me come down for a few days and then she could go to her piano group or go to her um, uh, scrapbooking groups <laughs> and musical things. And she, in, she was, they were living at that time in the Trilogy um, adult community in Rio Vista. And uh, she was known as the secretary of everything. Oh, fun. So, <laughs> so, so she was definitely busy and active. Yes, and so it was... And even, to, even if she didn't have something that she wanted to leave the house for... It was nice for her to have me come and just um, take my dad on an outing or, yeah. or or play some music with him or something like that so that she could go in her office and work un- uninterrupted. Yeah, just have a break. Exactly, yeah, or help with cooking meals. You know, I'd, I'd cook dinner or breakfast or things like that. So just, so I did that for, a, and I, I did some of the early uh, steps of, of looking at, at places with her because by you know as I said that was about t- uh, 2013 so he's 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 had uh, dementia by then for 10 years from and he was put on a on prescriptions quite early on and we do think that that uh, whatever the Aricept and yeah. Amendo which I guess are two common ones yeah that's what my mom's on they. Um, that probably prolonged the early stages of his illness because it was really, there was a few things that he lost the ability to do right away, and then over the years, a few more things, and it really was until you get up to like 2011 or 12, 13, when all of a sudden he started to lose a a lot more uh, abilities. And so that's kind of the time when I stepped up my visits and, and we started looking at, you know, what, what type of place do you want to move to for assisted living, and how's how's that going to look, um, and and what other steps? I mean, I think that was about the time we were trying to get him to stop driving, yeah, and um, uh, things like that. that. That that was you know kind of an important. That was around the same time also that he stopped recognizing 
anybody other than his wife, my stepmother. He, oh. he stopped recognizing me and my brothers and, and anybody and anybody else that he it That's was by hard. name, you know, yeah, that is hard. That was definitely hard when that when what? I realized that. Yeah, my mom thinks I'm her friend. Oh. And it that was kind of a gradual realization. So it wasn't quite as abrupt as I was expecting. Which is interesting because I call her mom and then she'll tell somebody I'm her friend. It's mm-hmm. like, so it's interesting that the brain is not putting those two pieces together. But you said he lo- lost some abilities early on. What what were those? Well, the, f- the first one, it's kind of nice. My uh, stepmother, Marty, she, she made a list of when he started needing help with various smart. things. And so the first thing that she put on the list was 2004 taking his medications and mm. it says just since inception. Basically ever since he started ha- once he was first put on these medications he was unable to remember to take yeah. them himself because he he didn't have any other prescriptions at the time. So he wasn't definitely he was not even in a habit of taking vitamins or pills of any kind. So that's the first one. The next ones were Operating things like a, a CD and DVD player. So a couple years later, um, he lost that ability to do that independently. Um, the next one she lists kind of is kind of interesting is limiting alcohol consumption. So oh. he always had wine with dinner. He always had like a nightcap before bed. But apparently, he lost the ability to kind of remember that he already had enough wine for dinner, and he already had his. That's funny, you know. So that. That was really one of the most distressing ones for the spouse because, you know, she still wanted to have a glass of wine, but yet, how do you say no to exactly your husband? Honey, you've already had, you know, two glasses or three or whatever. Uh, you know, do you start hiding? You know, it, it's kind of the period where she started had to start hiding things and telling white lies about mm-hmm. things because... Because he, because of something that he couldn't remember that would that would be um, a potential risk. Yeah, to, you know. that's interesting because one of the warning signs of Alzheimer's is was well, one is the memory loss that affects daily life, like remembering mm-hmm. to take your medications or running the electronic equipment that he probably could do without thinking well, he before. Could've, he could have built it. Yeah, <laughs> and then change in uh, mood or behavior. So the alcohol. Not being able to remember that he had that is almost in, in yeah. there. And so other things on this list are like being able to, you know, work the thermostat. Um, of Those course, can be confusing uh, anyway. Know, signing, signing his name, um, uh, you know, per, some personal care things um, are, are in there. But for them also was uh, uh Finding his own band part, meaning they where they were living in the trilogy mm-hmm. community, they had a jazz band in there, and at the beginning of it, uh, they moved there. They were uh, they were in their early sixties still, so they was a very act, active retired right community, and uh, so my dad was still writing arrangements for that for that trilogy jazz band and and playing trumpet in the band, and then as it, as it went on. He could still play the trumpet, but every time they would say, okay, now we're going to, whatever song was next, somebody else would have to find hmm. the music for him. Um, the, the progression on musical ability was kind of, you know, interesting and painful to experience, too, as myself, like you say, coming down a couple times a year or, or, or anywhere from two months to six months in between the time I see him, and could he still... Uh, read read music, or could he still play with the band? And by that point, I mean he knows most of these songs yeah. by heart and could play them in any key that you <laughs> oh, suggested. Wow. You know, um, but then to lose the ability to where he could only play much more limited. I mean, we used to I used to come visit, and he would they'd bring out a book, and he'd say, "Oh, I'll, I said I'll sing I'll sing with you. Do you play the piano? I'll sing." So, what key would you like me to play in? You know? Wow. And then it got narrower and narrower till he would play the key that he wanted to play in, and I would just have to sing whatever, whatever he played with. But um, sometimes d- during these later times, I would go down and sit with them in band practice, sit next to him, and just bring up his music for him, p- point to, wh- you know, to where they were, 
and it's you know the the brain still carries on some memories mm-hmm. and, and forgets other things. This one time I was in went to band practice with them. The band's playing. They come to an interval, like in jazz. It's somebody's solo. My dad stands up, does this amazing trumpet solo for the right amount of time, sits down, and then is completely lost for the rest of the song. That's crazy. I asked the director, was he supposed to stand up and do a solo right then? (laughs) Oh, yeah, he was. That's crazy. And it was amazing. But we can't have him do that in the show because we, we... don't know if he'll remember to do his solo when it's his turn. It's interesting because I've read a lot, and I'm, I need to... There's a group that's done a lot with music and Alzheimer's patients, and some of some people respond so well with music, like brings them back to mm-hmm. a level they haven't been at it in years. So it's interesting that he could just stand there and do his solo... Yeah perfectly and beautifully and but then be completely confused as to where where he went after that yeah and so and so they did have to sort of sideline him from the band not too long after that because it was too disruptive to the yeah you know the musicians next to him to have questions you know so he's he would still go to the rehearsal and listen while my while my stepmom played you know oh what does she play she was playing flute and saxophone. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. So how long have they lived in the... Well, they live in the memory community of the local assisted living facility. Yes. Well, they... they Around that same time, around 2012, they, she had decided which place, and it's uh, uh, in Brentwood, California... And put their name on the waiting list because she thought, well, we don't. The downsizing is going to be difficult, so we'll put our name for a two-bedroom place. And then, so it took about a year and a half, and they, their name came up, but it was for a, a one-bedroom place. Mm. They decided to. She realized that they they needed to go. Yeah, if you wait you know, that long, that's yeah. A long so it was time. already a year and a half after she knew that they really needed to. Um, be in, an, in, a, in a, an assisted situation. So they went to uh, um, accept the apartment in the assisted living, and when they retested my father at that time, they said, oh, he can't go on the assisted living side, he has to go on the memory care side. And so that that brought up a really tough decision for my stepmother. Does she want to live in the same uh, residence, but she's on on the assisted side, and he's on the memory care side. Or does she just want to live on her own? She could she could just live on her own, and she still now four years later she could still live on her own if she chose. She and she still drives, um, but or did she want to live in the memory care side with him? And. And that is what she chose. And she, she said, I'm going to try this for six months or until he no longer recognizes me. Um, we'll see how it goes. And she's been, been there four years. And it hasn't affected her that you can tell? Uh, she gets out enough with the other she, assisted living residents? She, she can't. Well, and she still has her driver's license. It was just renewed, so she just passed. Oh, she wow. doesn't drive at night. She doesn't drive distances, but she can still drive and do her her errands that she wants to that are nearby and visit her son and daughter that are not not too far. And so um, she's, you know, she's starting to consider other options again now because my father doesn't really recognize her sometimes Mm -hmm. consistently. He doesn't. Um, But she still likes, she still likes, She's still with him. She still likes being with him. So she so she says, "I'm not going to do anything right yet. I'm just going to kind of like see what my options are, but I'm not going to do anything yet." And yeah, she's so so they they go um, they go out for a drive almost every day. Um, Sometimes they take meals over on the assisted living side because he can go to to the main dining room if he's with her, and then some more some meals they take on the on the memory care side. Because the dining room over there is nice. I haven't, I haven't, I don't remember yeah, the, the memory care dining room. Good too. <laughs> so is where my mom's at. Yeah. 
And I was surprised, and they're having, they've been renovating where my mom lives, and they're having the grand, quote, quote, unquote, grand reopening on November 8th. So it's, you know, and they're going to have food and ribbon cutting and all that stuff. And they'll have a Thanksgiving for the families. They do separate ones. One is um, in the memory care, and the other one is on the assisted living side. And I went last year, I mean, it was my mom's first year there. And it happened to be on my birthday, so I went. And that was when I realized, yeah, I didn't think she remembered exactly who I was because I told her the date and because she asked me why I was there. And I said, well, I came to have lunch with you because, you know, today's a special day. And I said, they're having a party for me. And I said, you know, today's November 17th. I said, do you know why that's special? Total blank. Yeah. I'm like, well, <laughs> so much for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do, you, how do you get around asking these questions that, that you start to realize that the, they're not going to know the answer. So, so I don't I stop. Yeah. How do you get away from the pop quiz? Things? Yeah. I just, I kind of quizzed her because I thought I was fairly certain, you know, when I told her they were having a party for me, it was a special day. There was no, no inkling as to it, you know, what I was mm-hmm. talking about. Mm-hmm. So I was pretty sure I'm like, yeah, I've suspected that you didn't really remember who I was for a while. And yeah. so I, I feel blessed because I've seen and talked to people whose family members literally forget them. Like one minute they remember them and the next minute they're it's gone yeah. and they never get it back. And it's, and they can see it on their face. It's like all of a sudden they don't know who you are and they're a little concerned and they're confused and it's really hard. And so I'm very glad I didn't have to go through that, but it's, there are times when it's like, I'm not your friend. I'm not your sister. It's like it's one of my brothers. uh, uh, um, Well, I have two brothers, and one of them was having a a a lunch date with my dad and stepmom about every two months. So he he was kind of keeping up up on things. My other brother much much less frequently. So he Mm -hmm. asked me, "Well, how do you think things are for dad?" You know, I said, "I think." It's scary because every day you wake up and you don't know where you are and you don't know who all these people are, you know? Yeah. I try to, like, not visualize, but, like, contemplate that. When we moved, first moved my mom into her memory community, it was horrible. And I've you've heard on past episodes, mm-hmm. it was like, that was worse than the day my dad died by 100%. Wow. I mean, my dad had been on hospice, so when he died, it was actually a relief you know, it was the best night's sleep I'd had in weeks. But then, you know, moving in my mom literally two weeks after. So you said your stepmom waited 18 months for a place. Did they have to wait long for the memory community? Well, no, I mean, no, that, uh, no, there, there, there was openings there. It was there. At the, at the time when they when they had been called to take this one bedroom, luckily there was already openings on the memory side. Because I would have lost my mind if my mom couldn't have moved in. As when student. you needed her to, yeah, yeah, because, as listeners would know, my dad was on hospice, and he had not, you know, unbeknownst to me, assumed my mom would move in with us. And then it wasn't until literally a month before he died that my daughter moved out. So I hadn't even had a month with, quote-unquote, spare room. Yeah. And my husband and I are self-employed. We work from home. You know, we have, we're young. I mean, I have a grandmother that's mm-hmm. 100 and a half. So mm-hmm. 51, almost 52 years old is not old compared to 100. But if, you, if you're trying to conduct work, you can't, yeah. you can't have that I- interruption that, that right. and would happen with a person who can't, can't, cannot remember that you need to be not interrupted. Yeah, <laughs> and when, she, when he was in the hospital and we moved her, you know, she would stay here for a while. She would be with my sister for a while. Her sister helped take care of her in her, you know, my mom's home for a while. And all, first off, all that bouncing around was terrible for him, but we didn't have a choice. But I was trying to work, and she'd literally hover over my shoulder while I retouched portraits. So I'd have to talk to her and keep her engaged and try to get my work done. And it was it was so stressful, and I knew it wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. And I also, you know, I just turned fifty. I'm like, I'm not giving up all of my life. Yeah. To stay home, I mean, I'd have to give up the gym and cycling, and you know, I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, that is not happening. And I'd already toured where she's at, <clears throat> and 
we had originally decided, my sister and I, that we would move my aunt into my parents' house, and she would take care of her sister. Mm -hmm. She took care of our grandmother, her mom. Um, but there was some red flags starting yeah. to to unfurl themselves, <laughs> and I I have I have a tendency to be a more negative, pessimistic person. I, it's a trait that I've worked on very hard. My dad was like that, and people always pointed out how I was like that. So I have spent most of my adult life battling that, <laughs> att- you know, that attribute to myself. And I, so I, one day I'm just like, okay, you know, we're talking about, you know, my aunt took care of her mom and lived on grandma's social security. So when my grandmother passed away, my aunt was destitute. Mm -hmm. Why the other brothers and my mom, I know why my parents didn't help out more because my mom was in the beginning stages. And so my dad was dealing with her and he just couldn't deal with my grandmother also. You know, that's maybe a good enough excuse. I don't know. It's hard to tell at this point. Why the other siblings, because my mom's the oldest of four, didn't do something different with my aunt? I mean, they yeah. let her do... I mean, I was like, yeah. like, like, did you people expect this to, to end differently? Yeah. So my aunt is on welfare, and she has, you know, public housing. And it took two years for her to get the public housing. So I knew that if she moved in with my mom, and my mom is 11 years older, my mom would likely go first. Then we'd have to have my aunt living in their yeah, house the yeah like and, with, with you know so with like with my folks I, d- I don't know details about their financial situation since my stepmother is still competent to to handle their finances I do know that they their finance since they were married later in life mm-hmm. they, ch- they chose to keep a lot of their finances separate so but she manages you know my dad's accounts as well as her own accounts but it's it's you know that's starting to factor in. He had, um, they had bought long-term care policies mm-hmm. uh, earlier, like maybe in their early sixties or something like that. But they only last for three. The particular one, you know, it's it's three years worth of coverage. So I think my father's that's that's been very helpful in him paying in the memory care. Yeah. But, but it's it's running out now. So that's another factor in thinking about is this arrangement that they have now how, how much longer are they going to do that where they're both in the in the memory care place it wouldn't be cheaper for her to switch sides though uh no it would be about the same yeah uh, yeah because their count it's a point system so mm-hmm. yeah they're, they're all kind of the same yeah her her fact that she's in the memory care she's still not she's guilt, still only getting charged i guess based on the amount of care that she needs which is like not Almost much. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's six levels of care where my mom lives, and it's probably the same where your dad's at. Mm-hmm. And my mom's on like level two, although she might be moving up to three. It'll be, it's again, point system. Mm-hmm. So um, I know they reevaluated her like six months ago, but because of the renovations, like I was telling you about, I think she's she slipped a little bit and. Yeah. You know, they I mean like say so you see that every week and I don't know if this is the different perspective for your listeners of me being the person that, you know, sees these increments, you know, a few months at a time and you know, probably like many people, the first part just started talking about when I come to visit, he asked the same questions again, 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 again. Um you know, and how do you distinguish that? You know, is that normal memory loss from aging or is this, you know, yeah. A, a dementia that you know so of course we found out that it was the the early stages of dementia when when he was doing that and pro, like you say progressing from from that to um watch like I say watching what he could do with in his with his music and also uh reading I think that was another one that I somehow picked up on before my stepmom that was of course there with him every day because my dad would get up and he would do certain little jobs around you know he'd go out and get the newspaper and this and that and then he would sit down and and do uh certain puzzles out of the paper like the cryptograms and (laughs) jumbles and stuff like that so he'd sit down and do his puzzles so when i first started that time of visiting more often i could i could bring down projects or work to do and just sit side by side and he'd work on his puzzles and i'd work on my stuff i didn't have to 
entertain him or distract him or divert him or any of those things. He was busy doing his puzzles until I looked over and realized that he'd been do- working on the same puzzle all morning and nothing is written in. Oh, wow. But he was content in he was just working on his puzzles as far as anybody would glance over and see. Huh. And then I, be- uh, I guess I began to realize both in being in in restaurants and see that he was not really reading the menu. He was just kind of asking everybody else what they were going to have and then pick, choosing based on that. Or just magazines. You know, he had magazines, but he would pick it up. And I could see, again, after a period of an hour where he was reading and I was reading, he was still on the same page. So that's when I brought it to, you know, call that attention to that to my stepmother and said, uh... Yeah, that doesn't seem normal. Because she, because she hadn't really, real, you know, the person that's there day by day, I guess maybe wasn't for because that reason she wasn't noticing it. I said, well, maybe you, well, next time he goes to the doctor, ha- ask about that because I, I don't think he can read anymore, and and it turned out to be true. Yeah. And my mom's the same way. The last time I had, but he could still read music at that point. He lost that a little later on. That's interesting. <laughs> And my my parents and I, the last meal out with my parents was November 1st, 2016. And my mom had done this more often, but I had been with them more frequently that fall. Mm-hmm. And she would literally look at the menu and then ask my dad what he was having. And my dad, he was a crappy eater and <laughs> super fussy. I mean, he didn't like sauces or onions or garlic or, I mean, mm-hmm. he liked meat and potatoes and basic basic and that wasn't what my mom liked so for her to ask oh what are you having he'd usually find something on the menu he knew that she would like and that would be okay suggest i kind of my stepmom did that too she oh i think you might like the yeah you know the turkey sandwich or whatever. yeah or yeah. like last time you were here you really liked the yeah so yeah. that's interesting that they have the same <laughs> the same symptom i guess is the right word because yeah. one of my mom's friends in the community that they're in still reads Mm -hmm. and it's really interesting because she reads really well um i don't know if you've heard the promos for the two lap books yeah um which i'll have to show you what those look like she read the intro where it talks about how to use this book and you know it was just it was interesting to see that she actually did read Mm -hmm. and my mom can still read but it was interesting and if you listen to the episode about two lap books um, I left the voice-activated recording device on the table between my mom and her friend while I used the ladies' room. And while I was gone, it recorded my mom and her friend, both reading quite fine. Oh. But when I was present, my mother had issues. She was struggling over some of the words. Interesting. Yeah, I oh. was like, huh. That was a... I need to, I need to stick that recording device when I'm not around a little more often. <laughs> Now that the the place is put back together, it'll be a little bit easier. But it was there was two ladies and my mom that read these books, and it was really fascinating how these books are great for these guys. So, well, you know, I don't know uh, other you know fam- family um, testimonials or whatever yeah. that you that you've done, and and ha- but we've been I know we've been talking on the side about how different types of uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and how they manifest differently in each individual. And I guess I would say with, uh, for my father, he has, he has not, you know, he did not become belligerent and argumentative and foul mouthed or anything like that. It's really been almost the opposite. He's always, he, he, as I was growing up, he was always like the one that told you what to do. And Mm -hmm. he's become, he became very agreeable yeah, my mom and is curious about other people. You know, that's so. interesting. Yeah, my mom is very, <laughs> e- like, I don't want to say eager to please, but I think because I go once a week, so I'm a diversion from the regular same old same old, and she always appreciates that. And I guess I'm enough diversion that <laughs> regardless of what we do, she appreciates it, which is nice. Um, she has gotten more obstinate which was her normal personality trait about you know she wants to wear what she's going to wear and 
as I we were talking offline, I guess is the right phrase, mm-hmm. that the morning caregiver that helps with showers has to literally go in before my mom gets up and tell her it's shower day. Because mm-hmm. if my mom gets up and dresses, that's it. We're not it's taking not a shower. shower. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and the showers are scheduled, so it's not like, okay, well, she didn't do a shower today. We'll try again tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and they only do it, you know, a couple times a week because they don't need as much bathing as, you know, most of us don't need daily showers like we think. Mm, yeah. Um, we don't really get that dirty, but it's just a habit. So that you know, the seniors don't need. It's actually when my dad was on hospice, I learned that it's actually not a good idea for them to shower regularly. Mm. You know, plus it's you know slip and fall yeah. hazards yeah, and yeah, all hazard, kinds of yeah. stuff. Yeah, balance the hazards and the benefits. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. So it's you know because I I had to. She'd been wearing the same three quarter length sleeve sweater, ninety five hundred degrees outside all the smoke from the fires california had this summer and my mom's wearing this sweater and it got to the point where i realized the last seven out of eight times i'd seen her she had on this sweater and that's when i found out she was starting to give him a hard time about showers and and a lot of that is she actually told him you know i'm not a child Mm -hmm. so i think she i don't know how they were wording it but she was feeling you know, demeaned, and mm-hmm. that's. I'm sure that's really hard to get them to do what they need to do, and not treat them like they're two. Yeah, and we've had, a, you know, in my visits. I mean, there were a couple episodes I remember about that too. With, you know, one in particular was getting out my dad's telescope, and he that was another of his hobbies in my childhood was his telescope and astronomy and so forth. So he had a really nice telescope, and my husband wanted to. No, oh, let's let's take it out. Hey, show me how it works, you know. And yeah. so we got it out, and we were trying to get it set up and everything. And that's when, you know, my dad kind of reclaimed himself and said, you know, like, kind of like step aside. I I will do this. I will take know? care of it. And, and he did. <laughs> oh, he, that's good. He, he did know which some lever that we didn't know to to flip. You know, he he just came up there and flipped it and started looking that's at things. So. Funny how that that's all muscle memory. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, Because just... my parents lived in their house for, like, literally two months shy of 47 years. And once my mom's routine was disrupted, it was obvious that she was worse off than my sister and I mm-hmm. were led mm-hmm. to believe or f- knew. Yeah. At least that's how I felt. And we, we've talked about it. You know, my sister said, well, I think mom used her long-term memory a lot more I mean, all of us, you know, we get up and we have a certain morning routine and we can do it bleary-eyed, you know, not quite awake. Well, that would be similar to, you know, maybe early to mid stages of memory loss. And that's what she did. Mm -hmm. Um, But it just got to the point where, you know, when my dad was on hospice, they both needed 24-hour caregivers and they took care of the cooking and other Mm -hmm. stuff. So, you know, I think my mom kind of felt at a loss. And once she acclimated to the memory community... You know, now she's yeah. she's very social, and she, you know, she's because she's still very physically fit. She helps other residents, and you know, it's it's really interesting to watch her with other people. Yeah, and my so going back four years ago when they first moved in there, I think my dad was kind of that way, not carrying on what we would consider a real conversation, but being conversational with another memory care patient to where both of them were content yeah. in their conversation. Yeah, that's you know? what my mom so, does. So so that was good. Uh, though I don't... He's lost that by now. Mm. You know? um, but uh, he went through, I think, at that time, I mean, the sequence was kind of like he, he, he had a more agitated phase Mm. Uh, to where he was constantly asking questions. What are we going to do now? What's next? Who's coming? Who's doing this? And so um, that was like, I would say maybe in the last year or year and a half, um, he's been more calm, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. You know, he's lost that curiosity and, and, and his questions are a lot more limited. Yeah. But he's not, but he's not anxious yeah that's that's a good thing so you come down twice a year at least Mm -hmm. 
So what's that like? I mean, what is it? Let's start with, so when you're home, I'm assuming you call. I call probably um, three to four weeks. Yeah. And he doesn't, does he not, he probably doesn't talk much on the uh, phone. Well, uh, Marty always uh, puts it on speakerphone so that he can hear, but um, his his participation is, is really like um, um, from autopilot. Yeah. You know, oh, hi, you know, uh, you know. Muscle memory again. Yeah. 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 So it's it's beyond the ability to actually understand and add to the conversation really on the phone and that did that happen gradually yes gradually because he um i mean it's been quite several years that he would remember like where i lived or what kinds of things i was involved in but if i if we started talking about them he could if it was a subject he was interested in he, he could ask a a relevant question or something and i guess i would say something with my the experience that my brother has talked about too that my stepmom and I had always wondered did he just kind of progress into this without realizing it or was there a period where he realized what was happening I mean she knew that he denied it at first and said oh it's just normal yeah you know you know normal memory for somebody my age but my my brother did say oh no there was a time when he said you know if you want some Music, you know, I'll do some musical arrangements for you. And so this would have been like in the first couple of years after he was diagnosed, two thousand three, four, five, in there. And he was offering to to write arrangements for singing groups that I was in, and he did, and he did some really nice ones. And and it's my nice brothers, to have. my brothers are in a blues band, and my one of my brothers was in bands of a couple different genres. So my dad was helping him with some arrangements, but apparently my dad said. Any arrangements that you want to write for me, you better tell me soon because I'm losing my marbles. Mm. So he, there was a point at which he knew he was declining. Yeah. They get to a point where, and I can't remember the exact proper term, where it's like they don't realize what's happening. We can see that something's mm-hmm. going on, and there is a medical term for it, which I should look up again. <laughs> but they, they don't realize what's happening. And it's funny because my mom makes comments like, oh, my memory's just getting really bad. And it's like, it's it's really hard sometimes not to, not to super agree with her. Yeah, I don't want to be insulting. Mm, and, yeah, yeah. you know, like, yeah, you wouldn't kid me now, would you? <laughs> Which is a phrase my mom would have used, and she might still. Um, and there was there was one time, and it's on, it's on the episode, I think, that I released on Labor Day weekend or Labor Day week. And where she says, oh, senility is setting in. And it's yeah. like, ay, ay, ay. Yeah. And one of the funny things, I don't think I've told this story. Well, my dad was on hospice because you know, he was diabetic and his blood sugar was out. I mean, his body chemistry was just completely out of whack. And his heart couldn't take the dialysis. So that's when we decided to do hospice. So he wasn't well at all. And his memory went back mm-hmm. to 1998. And he was just being obstinate with the caregivers. And I went and tried to intervene because he was he was a Marine for four years, but mm-hmm. that never seemed to unlearn some of those behaviors. <laughs> and he was just getting really rude. So I was trying to diffuse the situation, and he was just obnoxious as heck with me. So I went back in the kitchen, and my husband and I were talking with heads together quietly. Mm. And my mom literally poked her head between the two of us and said, he's just being an ass. Mm -hmm. If you want to go in there and tell him to drop dead, feel free. And I thought my husband and I were going to hurt ourselves. We were trying so hard not to laugh. And then the hospice people are telling us, oh, your your dark sense of humor is refreshing. And I'm like, I'm not sure that's a compliment. But (laughs) it was like, it was a very weird experience because he didn't, Unlike most people who are on hospice, he did not realize that was what was going on. He kept saying he needed to get better, and you know he yeah. he was trying to get over the flu or whatever. There was always yeah. you know well, we an excuse. Lucky that even when he when he could no longer recognize us or call or recognize us by name or by relationship, let's say 
he thought we were nice. He would, he would <laughs> tell good. he would tell our stepmom, "Oh, those people in the other room sure are nice." And it's such a it's so painful for her. She'd go, "Oh yes, they are." And that's your that's your your son and daughter, you know. And but it, what that I, I don't know how that that doesn't register. Maybe a person kind of doesn't realize that they're a parent. Yeah, itself anymore or something like that. Yeah, they seem to regress. My mom mm-hmm. and her friend love to. Well, they love to get out in nature, which I've talked about a lot, but there was one Monday when we didn't have rotary, so I picked but well, I picked up my mom and her friend wanted to come along. I'm like, okay. <laughs> People think I'm crazy mm-hmm. when I bring both of the you know, the ladies with Alzheimer's out, but they they kind of entertain each other, mm-hmm. so it is a little bit easier for me. I still do feel very responsible for both of them. And we went to the city park with the splash zone. And they were just watching the young kids, <laughs> yeah. watching the young kids. And I'm, you know, at first it was, you know, early afternoon, so it wasn't terribly, it was warm, but it, we were sitting in the shade and it was fine. And, you know, we were there for about an hour and a half. And I was thinking, you know, I hope these ladies get ready to leave soon because it is now 105 degrees <laughs> and I am melting. Yeah. And I'm about ready to fully dress to go in the splash zone with these kids. Yeah. So, and it was interesting because. About the time I was thinking that, my mom starts looking around and she's she's like, I don't think I know where my room is. And I said, well, it's okay. I know where you're at. I said, we drove here, so your room is back. It's over there. And mm-hmm. I kind of indicated off in the distance. Mm-hmm. And I forgot what her friend was saying, but it, it, it became obvious. It's like all of a sudden it was like... Time was up. Huh? Yeah, it was like... <laughs> Like the timer had flipped or something. It was really interesting, and thankfully at that point it was like, oh, good, we're leaving because, you know. But there's, yeah, it's just that, that there's a mysterious of how the brain works, especially like this recognition, like you say, like whether whether your parent re, realize, can call you by name or can or can say that's my daughter or whether they just sort of know that you're somebody that belongs with them but they can't articulate it you know and I mean that's kind of one of my sweeter memories recently I thought of after I after I um, read that book Still Alice Mm -hmm. I I thought of asking things a different way and instead of asking like a question that was going to have a right or wrong answer for my dad you know yes your name is Pat and yes you're my daughter and da 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 I just was sitting in by the couch and I said well um, do I look familiar to you and he goes, well, well, yeah, a bit like my daughter, I guess. Oh, that's funny. I was like, well, you're right. That's because I am your daughter. I'll have you to know? try that with my mom. <laughs> you know, just that, and just that question, just kind of a different question. It was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, that I was always, kind of a nice. It was, that was an, that made a nice moment. I yeah. Guess I say, yeah, my mom is always so appreciative. I take her to the park or out to the, you know, the, we're blessed with some regional parks around here, so they're a little mm-hmm. bit. Even more, I don't know, fancy is not quite the right term. A little more full of nature than just your standard city park. Yeah, yeah. And she always says, oh, it was such a nice day. And I'm like, I'm so glad that an hour and a half to two hours constitutes a whole day. (laughs) Because about two hours is about my limit. And a lot of it's because with me, she's not super conversational. Mm -hmm. She's more conversational with her friend. And I've listened because I took them out to the regional park two weeks ago. Yeah. And, you know, so I listen to them and, you know, it's, it's basic conversation. It's probably a lot like, you know, like four-year-olds chatting with each other. So it's hard for us as adults to engage with four-year-olds for mm-hmm. very long, you know, but it was, it's interesting because they're both moms and grandmas. And so they, they see the world like they're still younger moms, but mm-hmm. I'm going to ask her if she, do you recognize me? And see what she says, because we have a distraction this coming yeah, week. Do I look familiar? Or something yeah, like because that, yeah. she's going to the <laughs> dentist, so I can ask her, you know, questions, and then leave her with the dentist, and she won't remember that I gave her the. Like, yeah, because I just remember that from the book, the character. Anyway, you know, she, 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 she knows the family members are something important but she can't remember but she can't remember exactly who they are or their names or something yeah and he still is like that with you he's he still has that familiarity that well he 
I mean, I think it's I think it's a fleeting thing. Mm. It come, I think it I think it would come and go, and I just caught him at at, at that moment when when it clicked. Um, you know, when I see him now, he's very trusting. I can I can take take him and walk you know down the hall or take him for a drive like I did today, and he'll he's not fighting me yeah he's not like you know? ah, stranger danger <laughs> yeah uh which my brothers always say really i would be scared to do that what if he all of a sudden decided he didn't want to get in the car with you i'm like yeah i take that chance but so he's been very trusting and agreeable and he's always asking what should what should i do next and i said well i think you should get in the car because the door's open you yeah know? that so. makes sense <laughs> there might be a time when something happens i know there was an issue my aunt and my grandmother pulled into my aunt's driveway, and I don't know what happened with my grandmother. She saw the devil in my aunt, and literally this little five-foot woman went running down the street yeah. away from my aunt and, like, towards a busy road, and my yeah. poor aunt was like, bah! and, you know, and I believe my grandmother was yelling, and I, I, I don't recall all the details because I think it's been six or seven years since she passed, that, you know, it was super traumatizing for Mm -hmm. my poor aunt. And I'm sure my grandmother wasn't thrilled because she was running away from something scary. So, you know, it could happen. So, you know, but it's um, kind of... I mean, so so that... So, yeah, so like like right now, I would guess I would say in the last year, really. I mean, when I first met you, Jennifer, um, he hasn't... I don't think he's changed a lot Mm -hmm. in that last year and and in the... the, the couple of years just before that was probably the the greatest, the steepest curve of 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 chain period of change. Um, and my mom seems really gradual. It's like she hums along for what seems like forever, and then she has a little dip. You know, like we've had a little dip now where I'm pretty sure she's slipped, but it's it's not so dramatic that it's definitely she slipped. But she does ask me when we left to go to the park this past week, we were halfway between her room and the exit. And we got, so I said, why don't we go out to the park, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, does my husband know where I'm at? Yes, mom. I told dad where we're going. I made the mistake once of saying, well, I, my dad was in rotary and she, Mm -hmm. I remind her that I, have just come from Rotary. And so I said, well, I saw Dad at Rotary, and he knew I was coming, so I'm sure he knows what, you know, he's not going to worry about it. He knows you're with me. Holy Toledo, she went into panic. I'm like, whoops, back up the truck. Yes, 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 Dad knows where we're going. I I talked to him on the phone. That that was, like, startling. But literally, we went from, it was probably 20 feet, and in that 20 feet, she asked me twice, and we get through the first door, and she asks me, that was the second time, we get to the other door, which is another maybe 15 feet. So that was the third time. Yeah. So in like 35 feet, she's asked me three times mm. if my dad, if her husband knows where we're going. And then we, she asked me that when the car, and I finally, this time, I'm like, you just asked me that, which I know is not really what you're supposed to say. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, seriously, you used to ask me that every two minutes, and now you've asked me that like four times in three minutes. <laughs> Like, okay, we're, we've, we're just starting to this afternoon. <laughs> Give me a break. So she's like, oh, I did. I'm like, yeah, but it's okay. You know, so I tried to diffuse it, but I was like, oh, I need to, di- I need to di- redirect this question before, you know, I stick her in the trunk because that's not nice. <laughs> and the, the other regional park that's close to her is literally like five minutes. Yeah. It's around the corner, and then you have to kind of drive. Yeah. And we parked, and... You know, you know my husband just remembers a time when we visited and we brought our dog and and my dad loved if he brought the dog and he'd pet and he'd and he'd pet Milo and it's and then of course the question always is oh how old is he you know and Chuck would say oh he's um, six or whatever he was six years six years old and so then of course this repeated several times yeah. during our visit to where oh and how old is he and Chuck goes. Six years and two days, and my, <laughs> my stepmother just, you could hear her bursting out laughing in the, in the next room. It's like six years, <laughs> and you're like, you're like yeah. and ten minutes lo- oh, since the last time you asked me. Yeah. I brought my oldest dog last year to visit, 
And I don't think he liked it there because he oh. literally kind of hid next to the chair in their courtyard next to me. And since he was 10 now, or he was almost 10, you know, he's the most mellow of the three. And whenever my mom's here, she always asks me about my dogs and how old they are. And the youngest one is still technically a puppy at mm-hmm. 17 months. Oh, he's a baby. I'm like, yes, I know. And he's a monster. He's wild. And, <laughs> you know, so I'm trying to decide if I bring one of the younger ones who are a little bit more hyper. So I don't, I haven't, I haven't ventured into bringing a, a different dog. Mm-hmm. Partly too, my mom's dog was with her mm, yeah, um, until dog. August. And then we had to rehome her for her health and because of the renovations. Yeah. They would like to keep the carpet as nice as possible for as long as possible. So I understood that. And I'm I'm afraid of triggering my mom's memory that mm-hmm. she yeah. had her dog. So yeah. I'll probably wait a little more just just to be safe. She doesn't talk about the dog anymore. Yeah. Kate, in the beginning, she seemed to notice that something was missing. But she didn't really seem to know what. And yeah. then she'd be like, oh, well, she must be with my husband. Like, whatever. You can think that all you want. And... And she would, for a while, she would talk about, oh, well, I have a dog. She's back in my room. And it's like, mm, yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, she's not. But that's okay. You believe yeah. that. And now she doesn't even mention the dog. So yeah. I'm trying to remember. I haven't had her here since Labor Day. So I think we're okay. It's an interesting because my sister and I struggled with that decision. I remember when, that, when you first discuss that I guess on Facebook or something and it's like well is it going to be which will be sadder if she doesn't remember that she has a dog or if she does remember yeah. that she had a dog you it know? just seemed traumatizing it's like oh yeah. well your husband died and we took you out of your house and you know there was just just so much giving upheaval your dog away. yeah it was just like oh yeah. but it was, it's it's been okay and there were signs that you know there was there was times when the dog would frustrate her and times when the dog just seemed to be more of an afterthought, kind of mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I have a dog. Yeah. You know, oh, did she get food? Yeah, that's yeah. why she weighs twice what she should weigh. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, it, but it was still a difficult decision. I mean, we've had dogs our entire life, mm-hmm. both my sister and I. And like I said, I'm four and a half years older, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. And my mom had dogs before I was born, so, yeah, that was that was a difficult yeah. choice. But it was mm-hmm. it was. But actually, the dog went to Oregon, so maybe I'll have oh, to have you have okay. her check yeah, in on her. Yeah. Not sure what city she's in, but yeah. So I mean, really much. So you know, as far as the future for for my dad, he, I mean, he can be what he can stay where you know the the memory care where he is. But whatever happens to my stepmother, but realistically, um, one of my brothers moved right near me in Oregon, so we mm. would probably you know move him up there near us if anything happened to our stepmom now so it is on us i mean we realize that we've had it really e- easy as children of a of a you know a parent with dementia we've had it very easy because you know weekly visits and everything and, and a lot of the decision making has has not has been taken care of yeah it's taken care of by our stepmother so but if um if something happens to her, I mean, we need to do our homework. We know ahead of time and yeah. kind of figure out where, you know, what criteria are we going to use and what and what, what are our choices in a, in our, in our area. And you don't know because she handles all the finance, and you don't know if they can afford to live there till one or both of them is or until both of them are gone. Um, that when they move there, they that was their plan. You know, um, but you know now I guess if, if if finances are getting along, I mean, like you say, with 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 my father, he doesn't have really any other major health problems. But I mean, we're also well aware that with dementia, your brain could just tell yeah. your your lungs to stop breathing at yeah. any time or something like that. So he he could he could he could live for. I suppose ten more years or something like that, or he could go on, you know, unexpectedly or not yeah, exactly unexpectedly, but I mean un- suddenly, I guess. Yeah, that's the. So we need to do. We do need to think ahead and think of, think of the finances. I mean, I I can, and 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 my stepmother would t- tell me that too, especially if we were thinking, hey, we want to make a plan for, 
what, what happened. This sort of thing we were doing when she was getting ready to move into assisted living. We need to make a short, we made a short term and a longer term plan. Okay, if something happens to you, like if you need to go in the hospital for a few days or a week, what's going to happen if you, if you're out of commission for, for longer, for a couple, you know, for a month or two, what's going to happen? Or if it's in, indefinite then yeah. what's going to happen so we kind of had all those ideas in in mind but not in in detail well at least you had them in mind because we didn't even have that much when we show up to to yeah. spend some time with my parents and put up some christmas decorations for my mom mm-hmm. and my dad thought it was 1998 and it was yeah. like holy crap what do we do <laughs> yeah. and i you know now looking back had I known what was going on, I would have called hospice right then. Mm-hmm. But he spent 32 days in the hospital, which was a nightmare for everybody, including him. Ooh, yeah. You know, my mom, my sister and I, I mean, like, everybody, including the hospital staff. And, you know, and the end result was we ended up calling hospice 32 days after, later. So mm-hmm. it was like, you know, and that was challenging because the hospital was trying to kick him out and I didn't know what we were going to do. You know, so we had zero plans, and mm-hmm. that was that was very difficult. And so that's kind of one of the things I try to advocate with people is, you know, you got to you got to plan ahead. There's a gal in my support group whose mom is definitely suffering from memory loss and loses keys and and doesn't pay bills properly. All those daily tasks that they lose, mm-hmm. and but will refuses to give up any any control. And this poor, you know, this poor gal is trying to figure out how to help her mom when the mom won't let her help. And it's just like, oh, I'm glad we didn't go through that. But what we went through was not fun. So at least you had plans. But because then at least you've thought it through. Like, I don't know why we never discussed as a family what would happen if my dad died first. Mm. And with, you know, diabetes and other issues, that was kind of logical. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, and then I've recently learned that. 65% of caregivers are hospitalized or die before their caree dies because it's so stressful and they don't get breaks Hmm. that, you know, you need a plan for, you know, what if she got the flu and they were living at home? You know, you can't can't deal with somebody when you can barely deal with yourself. So we were lucky that he, he really, when they were still in their house, he he didn't have a habit of wandering, yeah. but there were a couple of incidents of, like you'd say, driving wandering, but he would still Ooh. get in the car and drive somewhere, and they'd have to track him down. But So just exactly something like that. You need to have a plan because cause maybe the spouse or the caregiver is just sick, and they yeah. can't pay attention to what somebody's doing every moment. Yeah, it's like, I'll never forget our daughter. Are they going to try to cook? Are they going to go out for a walk? Are they going to go out for a drive? You know? Yeah, Yeah. I'll go to the pharmacy for you. Like, please no. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's definitely not cool. Yeah. Um, So, is it stressful when you come down? Or is it, you're just kind of prepared for what it's going to be? It's, you know, I... I think it's not really extremely stressful for me right now that I know that they're in, you know, a, a staffed... Yeah, they're taking you care know, of... Leg- you know, a, a facility that's got good staff. You know, they're going to have food. They're going to have care. You know, it may not be the instant that you think they should have it, but, you know, they, they're, they're going to be safe and they're going to, you know, be taken care of. Um, I think it was more stressful for me when, during the situation, like what we were just talking about a second ago, when we knew that anything could happen to my stepmother from just falling, if Mm -hmm. she fell, he wouldn't have known how to call for help. Yeah. If she got sick, uh, somebody would have had to come come help, you know. So that, that, that time when we knew that they were very vulnerable and, and, and... And she was trying to get them relocated, but hadn't, you know, their name hadn't come up on the list yet. I think that was the most stressful time for me. Yeah, that was 18 months is a long time for, I'm, now I'm like, whoo, <laughs> I'm feeling so very blessed <laughs> that I had decided my mom was going into a memory community and I brought my sister along on the same page and it was a little harder for her. I think she has a little more positive outlook on things. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm, I have a tendency to be very negative. Yeah. So I looked at all the 
horrible possibilities that would happen with our original plan and decided that there's no way I could live with that thought in my head that, you know, any yeah. of these horrible things mm-hmm. could happen. And now I've learned even more horrible things that can happen. Yeah. So I, I knew it was the right decision. And I called them and said, this is what yeah, I want to do. It happened quickly. Like with, like if I, even during that time, my stepsister, which is the one that lives closest, I mean, she, she was going to visit them and do the scrapbooking thing with her mother and stuff like that. Um, almost every week or play Scrabble and do the scrapbooking and things. So that's somebody that's at least was checking in, right. in on on them and making sure that her mother wasn't getting t- too stressed out and overburdened and everything. So it kind of, it kind of, um, I mean, it helped greatly as far as that comfort level that my stepmother's not... She's not alone. Overdoing it, oh, yeah. But she, but just it would be just be like the outside incident, like we say, a, an injury or an illness yeah, or just, something like that 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 would that would have um, upset the whole yeah the whole, I, the whole kind of delicate equilibrium. Yeah, that's why it's like I get frustrated with people whose family members, you know, like refuse to even contemplate an assisted living, and mm-hmm. I have a grandmother who's like that she wants to just live in her home and she's blind Mm. and just recently she the exhaust fan in the bathroom which is 40 some odd years old caught fire and you know she called my husband who does property management and he went over there and he sent one of his contractor people to go deal with it and the guy came back and he's just shaking his head and he's like that house and we're like we know she really, really needs to be in an assisted living community, and I think she would actually love it right. if she could, you know, the house is paid for, so if she just moved in for a month and gave it a try, I think she would love it, because she'd have people at her beck and call, which she would love, and she's earned it, you know? Yeah. She worked hard all her life, she raised three boys, you know, she outlived my dad, you know, she's done, you know, my grandfather had diabetes, she, mm-hmm. you know, she. She's she's put in her her time, you know. Yeah. She deserves to have people waiting on her hand and foot, but she expects it to be family. And she's kind of burned out my aunt, yeah. and because I deal with my mom, I have a hard time connecting with her too much because I'm afraid of getting sucked in. I don't have time for another person that needs hands-on attention and help and it's crazy, but you know, it's like that's one of the reasons I do this podcast is to let people know, you know, it's like it really is not like some horrible warehouse where you just go to wait and die, mm-hmm. especially if, you know, in assisted living, they've got all kinds of activities. Yeah. We actually, and re- some people, yeah, some people are going to decline because it's their physical health that right. from there maybe, but other people are going to are going to be kind of rejuvenated because, you know, maybe many of their friends have died. Now mm-hmm. all of a sudden they've got a new circle of you know, yeah. ready-made circle of friends and so forth. I well, mean, I have a, I have a best, I have a very good friend that that that's how it was with her. Her mother, her mother was really declining at home, mm. and as soon as she got into assisted living, bloom and you know she was social and Which active and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Once my mom acclimated to her community, like I said, she's very social and she helps take care of other residents. Um, a lot of them are not really super verbal. Yeah. They make noises, but it's hard to understand them. And my mom tries and then kind of wanders away because yeah. it's like, I don't get you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, she's always, she's she's a real helper and, you know, very social. So I'm, I'm really glad we made that choice and not the other options we were contemplating. I was contemplating a board and care home. There mm-hmm. are two in the neighborhood here. But I was, one, I didn't think they'd let her keep her dog. And I was a little concerned that she would wander away. And I didn't want her to, I didn't want that concern. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure she would, but, you know, I think where she's at is really good. She doesn't do the activities which we were hoping she would do. Um, I think she's too far gone for that. Yeah. Um, She does do them for other people, which is super frustrating. (laughs) It's like, why are you giving me the hard time? (laughs) Um, you know, but she just, she seems really happy. Yeah. So that's good. I'm I'm happy, you know, that makes me feel good that she's happy because there are times I wonder, you know, I'm, I'm home doing my thing and I'm wondering, 
especially like when the dog left. I'm like, oh, I hope she's doing okay tonight. Yeah. And, you know, they have flu outbreaks and it's like, oh, yeah, I hope she's okay. And like, you know, I see her every week. So it's okay. You know, that that's enough. And I know they'll call me if they need something. You know, they yeah. know I'm, I'm, I work with the staff a lot to, you know, to make things easier. You know, I know, we, I know those places are expensive, but I don't consider them, you know, they're not, they don't work for me. They, they take care of my mom and I'm blessed that they, we can afford that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I try to make sure that whatever's going on with my mom, if I can help them, you know, circumvent, like when they moved her shower to evening and she was really obstinate about that because she's never been a nighttime showering person. Yeah. When I found that out, I'm like, no, 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 switch that back. <laughs> You'll make everybody's life easier. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I try really hard to work with them. I try to help the other residents when they, you know, if I'm, if I'm there and they're asking for help and I can help them, I do. So that's, that's my little role. So that's kind of where my mom's at, which is, it's just interesting. It dawned on me. I'm a little bit more like her now, (laughs) which is probably a good thing. She was always more positive. (laughs) So do you, do you see coming down more frequently as he declines more or less? Um, same Um, probably a bit, you know, similar. I mean, maybe, you know, twice a year is probably not really enough. It probably should, you know, I should probably, it should probably be maybe three or four times. Um, it's amazing how those (laughs) quarterly sounds great until all of a sudden it's like, well, dang, it's been six months again. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, just so that, like you say, just so that when the time comes that my brothers and I need to make decisions that we're not completely in the dark on, yeah on in, on a, yeah in the dark so un, uninformed about his his status and what 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 kind of things you know work well with him or don't you know that, that kind makes of sense thing. so you have two of you are in Oregon you have a and, stepsister that's local uh-huh. I have a and, stepsister in Concord I have a stepbrother in Brentwood actually and then my youngest brother is in um Half Moon Bay area. So sort of sort yeah. of local. Yeah. Closer than you, but not conveniently close. Mm-hmm. I thought you had one in Livermore. No. No? Okay. I'm lucky I can keep track of my own family. <laughs> <laughs> and do they come fairly regularly? At least the ones that are Brentwood and the, Concord? Yeah, the one from Concord uh, almost every week, uh, I think, and the... Brentwood is they're in they're in frequent contact yeah so that's probably it sounds like they get enough My visitors mother's son and daughter yeah yeah they get enough visitors that or it, they have family occasions if it's somebody's birthday holidays they go they go there yeah mm-hmm. I don't know if I told you about our Christmas Eve last year so it was the <laughs> first one since my let's see yeah 2017 it was the first one without my dad huh. and it was 2016 was so horrible was like how can we make 2017 and you know, we need to start different traditions and new but with mom we need to keep things simple and was leading up to it was very stressful because i'm like first off it can't possibly be any worse than la- the 2016 but i wanted it to be a whole lot better but i was trying not to put too many pressures on myself and it was funny because we planned everything around all of our time schedules, but we forgot mom's dinner schedule. So here I am. I told my sister, you pick up grandma and mom and I'll cook. And because she's got two school age kids. So it's like, that was enough to deal Mm. with. And it's easier just for me to do all the cooking. We're, we're quite adept at it. We do big Thanksgiving. We used to do really big Mm. Thanksgivings. So I'm, I got everything ready and I waited till late afternoon to shower and, you know, I'd done all the cooking and late afternoon I get in the shower and I get a text message from my sister that said, by the way, we're going to be early because mom eats at five. So we either have to pick her up before she eats or she's going to end up having two meals. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And then about 20 minutes later, I get a second text message that said, heads up, Diane S. is also coming with us, which is my mom's really good friend. And I'm like, okay, well, that'll be interesting. And it was actually really nice. You know, it wasn't the Christmas holidays like we had when I was a kid. You know, my grandmother is, you know, like I said, she's mostly blind. 
And so there's all kinds of considerations of helping her. And then we have the two ladies with Alzheimer's. So there, you know, it was, you know, not quite as, you know, kickback and holly jolly as I would have liked, but it was actually pretty nice. And my sister and her family were here and we haven't had that in a long time. So it actually came out pretty good. So we're going to do Thanksgiving, but with my daughter's fiance's family and, Mm-hmm. Yeah. On, you know that'll that'll be interesting so it's mm-hmm. you know every every month is you know new challenges but new new experiences and yeah i haven't i haven't been uh i haven't visited during a holiday in quite a few years i guess that's true so that's that's a little different since they were in their own house yeah i've done that yeah it's they used to s- split it and because my sister had the younger kids I would have my parents here on Christmas Eve, and they'd go over there to the younger grandkids on Christmas Day. And we would, like I said, we did a huge Thanksgiving for friends and neighbors and all kinds of people the Sunday before Thanksgiving. So that's when my parents came. And then in 2016, we weren't home. Well, we were home that weekend, but we got home like that night, the night Mm -hmm. before. So we weren't even home, you know, 12 hours when we would be having this big party. So kind of fell out of that habit two years ago. And... You know, now it's kind of like with life is, I don't know, it's got crazier. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened, but, you know, it's all a journey. And it's, you know, I like talking to other people that are on the same path yeah. because your dad and my mom seem really similar. And I haven't uh-huh. run across somebody who's, whose symptoms or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, their track. trajectory or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're, you know, they have like, it sounds like similar personalities, similar you know, they've lost things that's, you know, like my mom doesn't read. And, mm-hmm. you know, did he ever, um, we had to stop taking my mom out to restaurants because restaurants are so loud and she would just complain constantly. Oh, well, no, not for that reason, but because he he doesn't really consistently use a fork or spoon uh-huh. anymore. So it's, you have to take him to a restaurant. We have taken him out this these days that I've been visiting, but one was a sandwich and one was pizza so it, it has to be things where it's it's okay for him to eat it with his hands because that, that's the way he that 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 is his method of eating now and so we just got to be selective and that makes what sense. type of restaurant we take him to or what we you know what food is will be br- interesting you know, given to him well my mom gets to that point because they don't give the memory community residents knives no. for obvious reasons and I was having lunch with them, and it was roast beef, which, I'm sorry, that requires a knife. They had small slices, but they weren't bite size. Oh, yeah. And I got to the point where I was, I just basically stabbed the slice of meat with the fork and kind of chewed it off sort of popsicle style. <laughs> you know, not quite the way I was raised, yeah. but it was either that or my hands. Yeah. And my mom was struggling with, yeah. you know, trying yeah. to cut it with a fork, and I finally demonstrated how I was eating yeah. it. I said, you know what? Nobody's going to care if you eat it like this. And yeah. I think she still resisted, you know, and there was Josephine left. Uh, her their, their rooms are adjacent with a Jack and Jill bathroom. And her neighbor at the time, this gal, her family, they ran out of money, so she left. But she had pretty bad arthritis, and she was struggling, and she finally started eating it with her hands, too. And I had pointed out to Josephine the same thing. Like, just stab it with a fork and nibble it off of you. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen anybody in her community with eat with their hands. No. So that well, should be interesting. my stepmother did that, too. She got into a phase where that's that was the only way she ate, no matter what the was on the plate it was finger food sometimes it's just easier <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and not not with everything but there's times when or not my yeah my mother-in-law excuse oh, your me mother-in-law, not my stepmother okay. just my mother-in-law yeah did she have memory loss too oh, yes oh, yeah my. so that that was where we where i first experienced it my husband and i were were um were um she yeah with with his mother yeah Ugh, not fun but that, that's tough that's a topic for another day. I guess so. Yeah, that because because hers was very different. She was, she was not peaceful and agreeable Ugh. in her as as she lost her memory. No, I, I hope my mom's she was, personality she was fighting it doesn't no. change. You know, and I don't. I didn't deal with my grandmother too much, so I don't know how she was. I think she was pretty reasonable, which again, she was a pretty strong personality. Mm-hmm. So it's. 
It'll be interesting to see what's happening. My mom has a, pro- a an appointment with a neurologist on December 3rd, so I might get some more answers, as many answers as they can give at this point, and say, you know, because I asked the new the nurse practitioner who's her new care provider, her general mm-hmm. care provider, and they're like, oh, well, who's your mom's ne- neurologist? I'm like, I have no idea if she even <laughs> has one. So she set up with a new neurologist and... She I, she was encouraging me to send mom, you know, take mom there. And I'm like, why? And she looked at me and I'm like, oh, okay, I recognize that expression. I'm like, oh, I can have like timeline? And she's like, yeah, that might help. I'm like, okay. If I'm going to get some answers, I'll go. But if I'm just going to, if they're just going to reaffirm that her memory is terrible, then I'm not going to waste our time. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. I'm going to try to get permission to record some of that about what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, because I know a lot of, Family members, you know, when they're dealing with their parents or their spouse, you know, they resist all that. And I think it's just fear, you know, and obviously with Alzheimer's right now, there's no, no cure. Right. There's, you know, there's not even really a good prevention. So, you know, why get, why get diagnosed if there's not much you can do? <laughs> Although there are, you know, lifestyle choices that can make things better. So yeah. it should be interesting, but... I appreciate the conversation. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. (laughs) Definitely check out the show notes or even the webpage for each episode. I include a lot of additional useful information every week. And definitely check out the My Favorite Things page because I created that specifically so that you did not have to hunt down some of the best books and tools to utilize with your loved one. Are you looking for a way to connect with your loved one? Maybe an activity you can do together instead of sitting around answering the same questions over and over again? Have you checked out two lap books yet? If you haven't, you're missing out on something that I am certain you and your loved ones will thoroughly enjoy. Two lap books have changed many of the visits I've had with mom tremendously. These simple read aloud books were created specifically for memory challenged adults. You see, people living with Alzheimer's eventually lose their ability to initiate conversation with others. Because of this, these uniquely adapted books, quote, give voice to these loved ones. By using the book's large, simple text and beautiful, colorful illustrations, we can initiate conversations. Most noteworthy, we can make meaningful connections with our loved ones and help stimulate their mind. Caregivers will enjoy sharing these books and creating purposeful, interactive activities for engaging people with memory deficits. Reading these books together could very likely bring out memories you can cherish together. There's a link in the show notes to the My Favorite Things page on my website. The page is linked to the Amazon pages of all my favorite books and products that have helped me with my mom over the years. Definitely check it out. I'm certain you'll find something that will help you like they helped me. Could you do me a favor? Can you go to Apple iTunes and leave a rating or even a quick review? This is how new people find my podcast, and I can't be a supportive podcast if people don't know about me. As always, I'll chat with you again next week.